everyone. Welcome to the Knitterati podcast. I'm Link Lashley from Knitterati Designs. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for putting up with me and for coming back to see some more. And if you're a new viewer, hopefully you'll find something that you like. And I think this is podcast number 21, so there should be plenty of, of other episodes there if you decide that you do like this one. Um, I'm starting this week with the finished object. So you might remember this from the last few weeks. And show you the tag here for the yarn. See, I have I have a little bit of it left. I'll explain that in a minute. So this is Easy Knits. You'll be well used to seeing this if you've been watching for the last few weeks. And the colour is Night Stalker in Fidget Lace. I'm just noticing here how orange my nails look. They're actually Pink. They're actually a day glow pink in real life. I'll just try putting them next to some pink and see how they look. Hmm. Strange how things show up on camera. Anyway, um, so yeah, this is my simple shawl for beginners as an introduction for using lace weight yarn. And for your first shawl, if there's somebody who wants to knit a shawl who has never knit one before, this is just a basic triangular shawl. So as you can see, I have bound off using the nice stretchy bind off that I showed a few weeks ago on one of the technical sections. So this is, let me see, I have the midsummer shawl is in test at the moment. That should be just about finished and should be coming out in the next few weeks. Then I have my um, my cowl using the mini skeins and then this one will hopefully be out after that so there is a little bit of a weight you know which it it's good for me to have a little bit of a, a weight because it just gives me time to be creative with some other stuff but um so yeah this won't be out kind of this week or next week it'll be a little while so I'm really really happy with how the color turned out down here unfortunately I think my nails yeah they're a little bright for the camera sorry guys I'll know better for next week yeah I'm really happy with how the the color turned out I'm just trying to move this around now with having my nails on camera you know there's no real pooling but there's just enough to lift the gray you know so I'll show you some up here as well so it's not so plain, there's just a little pop of colour. I do really enjoy a little pop of colour. You'll probably hear me go on about that quite a bit. Oh, I should also mention this shawl is not blocked yet. This is fresh off the needles. I just finished it yesterday evening. So it will actually stretch and grow. So that lace will open up a lot more than it is than, than what you're seeing now during the blocking process. So you can see just if I pull it you can see how much more that opens out so yeah that's one down and as you can see i have a bit left of my skein now because i'm designing i tend to leave a fair bit uh, still in the cake that i don't use as part of the pattern and the reason for that is if you go out and you buy you know some of this fidget lace and you knit it up and your gauge is a little bit off because you know with shawls yeah you I give a gauge but you know you're not always going to get the gauge and maybe you're just a little bit off so if your gauge is a little bit looser than mine you'll use this and that's why I tend to leave it because I want to make sure that if I say you need so much yarn that there's a there's a good chance that you're going to get it done even if you don't get the right gauge. That said, it's one, thing's for one thing for shawls, but if you're knitting anything that's any way fitted, you, you really, really need to do a gauge swatch. So there you go. But if you were, let's say you did have my gauge and you were knitting this, the pattern will be designed so that you can just, you know, you can add on a bit extra and use up this yarn. Because one thing I do hate is Hey, sorry guys, I don't know what happened there. My camera just turned itself off. But yeah, one thing I do hate is having a load of yarn left over 
after doing a pattern because it just seems like a waste and then you're left looking for a project to use it with. That said, you could always use it on the, the cowl pattern that'll be coming out. <laughs> it's a bit cheeky of me. But there you go. This is the, the simple beginner shawl that I've finished this week. So it's a finished object. Okay, take this out of the way. Just fold it up a little and I'll put it up there. Okay. So the next thing I have is a work in progress. Do I have this the right side up? I don't. That's the wrong side. There we are. So this is the linen and lace shawl. This is another version of it. And as you can see, I've completed section one, two, and I'm on to section three. So this is for the knit along that's currently being hosted in the Knitterati group on Ravelry. So that's K-N-I-T-T-E-R-A-T-T-I. Or if you just go to the pattern page and read down through the notes, there is a link to the to the thread where this is being hosted. It started last Friday, but I know a lot of the people who have signed up for it are still waiting on their yarn because I, I announced it fairly quickly. I kind of wanted to strike while the yarn was hot and I wasn't expecting the pattern to come out when it did. I won't go into that again if anybody's interested. If you go back to um, the podcast from a couple of weeks ago, you'll find out why. So yeah, I've cast on again to to work through it with the people there and you should definitely give this a go. This is a free pattern. So if you're interested in trying out something new, now is your chance. You're not going to lose money on a pattern that you know you might not like once you start to knit it. I'll just pull that out there so that you can see what it would look like if it was more blocked. Now the colours that I'm using and this, the colour isn't off just because of my nails. Actually, with my nails, this is a fairly true to colour. It's quite a light blue. This, in real life, it is a blue-green, but it's bluer than green. And when I put it with this blue, <laughs> it actually looks very dark blue. But, for some reason, whenever I take a picture of it or have it on the camera, I cannot get a true-to-life colour. So it looks almost a little toothpaste in some pictures, I think, because you know how sometimes you have the, the minty stripe in your toothpaste? That's what it reminds me of. And also, I suppose the... Actually, you know what's probably causing it is this needle. Maybe that's what's causing the colour. You know how when you put one colour next to another, it can, it can change how that colour looks? So maybe that's it. So the needles that I'm using here, I think with the, the blue um, with the blue cable, is that a higher higher? I can't remember what these are to be honest. And I did have a look for the package and I couldn't find it. So I don't think I've shown these before. Whatever these are, I quite like them. The tips are quite long and sharp, and I really like that. Um, not just for lace knitting. I know some people like to keep the sharper tips for lace knitting because they can sometimes split the yarn. You know, say if you were knitting with um, a chunkier weight. But I don't find that to be a problem for me. So I do favour sharp tips at all times, if at all possible. And I do really like these. I haven't used them that much. Oh, look, it's written up. Yeah, they're higher highest. It is, look. Higher, higher sharps. And you will notice, if you look at the pattern, that I'm cheating a little, because these are 3.25 millimetres, and I'm supposed to knit them on threes. And the reason why I'm knitting them on 3.25 is because I put my hand out, and this came. <laughs> And I know my three millimetres are being used elsewhere and I'm sure I could dig up another set, but this is the joy of shawl knitting. If you don't have exactly what's there, once you have enough yarn, you can size up if you want to and, you know, just go with it. So yeah, if anybody is knitting this and you want to do it on 325s, that's fine. It's not going to make a huge difference. Just make sure that you have enough extra yarn to accommodate the fact that your gauge will now be larger. Well, actually, your gauge might not be larger. If you do a, do a gauge swatch or a tension swatch, if you prefer a tension square, 
I see some people calling them. Um, that'll give you a better indication as to how much yarn you might use compared to what's listed in the pattern. So there you go. Really enjoying these. Actually, I wonder do they do, I'm sure they must do an interchangeable set. Might look into that at some point because I know I keep saying that I need a new set of interchangeables and then not buying them, but I really like these. Okay, and oh, I didn't mention this is Drops Lace. I think it's alpaca silk. Not certain. This has actually been, you can see that this one is all wrapped up like that. These two together have been through several iterations of you know, different bits and, and pieces that I've been swatching and trying, but I think I finally found a combination that I want to use them in. So yeah, if anybody does want to sign up for the Knit Along, you're very, very welcome. And it'll be great to see you over there. And don't worry about the end date as well. I've had a few people say that uh, they don't think they can complete it. And I think I, I just gave the end date as a month. Don't worry about it. If I find that most of most of the people need an extra couple of weeks, that's absolutely fine. I think it's more important that you cast on and just be a part of the group and post your pictures and let us see how you're getting on, you know, kind of get a, a nice group dynamic going rather than putting yourself under pressure. You're not supposed to be knitting under pressure. It's, you know, it's, it's nice. It's a hobby. It's supposed to be relaxing, <laughs> you know. So don't feel that you can't sign up just because of the end date. I put that in there just to have an end date, but I do think that I'm going to end up pushing it out by a few weeks at least, so there you go. Hopefully that might encourage a few more people to sign up. Okay, I'll put this to one side. Now, back to my Manos del Uruguay. And you'll see I haven't done too much on this since last week. Purely because I was trying to finish off the the grey easy knit shawl and get started on the on the linen and lace shawl. Sorry, it's not linen and lace. It's spring into summer. My apologies. I do have a shawl called linen and lace, which again uses the linen stitch and lace. <laughs> Strangely enough, which this also uses. So we have linen stitch and lace. But this is a spring into summer shawl. Uh, the linen and lace shawl that I have there is not for the faint of heart. So you do want to be quite an accomplished knitter before starting into that. Whereas you can do the spring into summer shawl as a confident beginner to an intermediate. Anyway, moving on. So I forgot to, to bring this last week to show you. So this is Mar Manos de Uruguay Marina. And I know I've mentioned this before when I bought this but it's really nice that you can see who dyed it so this is valeria i presume that's that's how they pronounce it valeria rather than valerie yeah valeria definitely and this is merino isn't it yeah superwash merino okay and the color is arboretum I do love the colour. You know what? I think the nails are helping a bit because it's a little more true to colour this week than I think it was last week. Okay, so last week this was on DPNs. This week I've moved to 9 inch circulars. And just to show you the difference. More dog hair. Now this will block out. I know from experience. I'm sure you've worked out by now. I knit a lot of shawls. <laughs> So, okay, so you can see here, I have two knit stitches and it was, this stitch was on one needle and this was on the other one. So the gap was in the middle and you can see how it's kind of pulled. Now, I'm sure I could have been more careful to make sure this stitch didn't get pulled out of shape, but I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to have to fiddle with it that much and to be that uncomfortable to have these stitches pulled properly next to each other. I just find that it changes my tension too much when I'm knitting, so I prefer to block it out. But look, you can see up here, as soon as I put it on the nine inch circulars, no more laddering. So this is why I do prefer nine inch circulars 
if I'm knitting something small. And the only reason why I started on DPNs is because you do start with, oh, I can't remember how many stitches, probably, I think it was 12 actually, which is odd for me. Normally it's nine and I haven't sewn in that end yet. So the circular cast on does get a little bit loose just until I weave in that end and then it will stay nice and, and closed. But the one thing about putting them on on the circulars is that it starts to look like a little hat. And then I'm knitting it and I'm going, oh, I, could, I could put a little ribbing on here and I could cast off and then I'd have a hat. <laughs> and this is, how I, this is how I end up with lace hats. And let's face it, it's so light that once I wear it, first of all, it would grow to epic proportions <laughs> because it's so open. And second of all, it's not going to keep me warm. And if I'm wearing a hat, I'm wearing it for warmth. You know, I think when I was younger, I had a face for hats, but not anymore, <laughs> unfortunately. So yeah, I've only gotten a little bit done on this this week, as I was saying, and let's see if I can pull this. I just don't want to drop any of the, the stitches off the needle. So you can see just a very basic little diamond motif there. And I'm actually going to move on to a different section now. I'm not going to keep the same motif the whole way through. So I'm going back into a little stockinette here and then I'll pick another motif. And the idea is that you do a little bit of lace. And then because these shawls get quite big, the stitch counts can get huge. You know, you do have sections of stockinette where you can just relax and kind of, oh, okay, I don't need to concentrate so much on this. And you can just enjoy your yarn and you know enjoy the feel of it working through it so yeah and there'll be hopefully more on that next week it would make a very pretty hat <laughs> no i'm not turning it into a hat i'm not look look i set it up there maybe you can't really see it that way see put it on it looks like a little hat <laughs> yeah i'm far too easily amused okay now, the last thing to show you today. You are familiar with these socks. You have seen them <laughs> many times now over many weeks. And I said I didn't know what I was going to do with... Oh, actually, no, I think I had cast on last week and I was showing you that I was going to do a pair of short socks. So I did. This is the first one. And I haven't changed the heel type yet. Actually, I have a confession to make. I've just been on the Spring Walls website. Uh, now, I've never ordered from them before, but I have put in an order for more sock yarn. Yarn that I don't really need. But I'm justifying it by saying that it's for the enabler. So that it, it is more... I often buy sock yarn and I make shawls with it. But this time, I'm actually going to try and make some socks with it. I'm swearing that, but I bought five different types. Maybe I didn't really need five different types. But I mean, I'm only paying, it's a standard shipping cost, right? And the shipping cost, I think you can get it at three euro. I paid four euro for signed delivery. I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't going to be any arguments. Like I said, I've never ordered from them before, so I don't know, you know, what their, their shipping is like or whatever. But because it's standard, is it not better that I bought five skeins and just pay for the shipping once? rather than, you know, buying one or two and then having to pay for the shipping a second time. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Also, isn't it better that I went online? Because I paid 40-something euro, all included. I'll be able to show you my squishy mail next week, hopefully. So I'll, I'll be able to tell you then exactly how much I paid. But if I had gone in in person, surely I would have spent more. So it's better. That, that is actually why normally if I can go into a shop and buy something rather than having it shipped, I will. Because, like I said, shipping in this country is very expensive. And actually, €4, Euro standard shipping, and I believe that is worldwide. Um, that is extremely cheap. I was surprised. So yeah, that's why I figured I'd try it. If I had gone into the shop, I can't go into a, into a yarn shop. I just can't without... I mean... If I only spend a hundred euro, I'm doing well. And I can't say that I should be spending. I mean, I've bought a lot at, at fairs and stuff. Um, 
So I really shouldn't be spending a hundred euro just on a whim. It's one thing that if, if I have a planned project, but just on a on a whim, just going in and and seeing what's there, you know, I kind of need to not do that. So that's why I've opted to pay for the shipping. I thought it was cheaper <laughs> to pay for the shipping than to actually go in and spend double the amount that I that I wanted to spend. I was going to say that I needed to spend, but let's face it, I don't need to spend on yarn at the moment. But I have. Anyway, I digress. So this week I finished this one and I've cast on the second one and I'm nearly up to doing the increases for the heel. This is how much yarn I have left and I do believe that I will get this finished. But it might be a little touch and go because what you can't see is, you know how when the yarn is like this, some of it falls down and you, you kind of have a little a bit up here that has not a lot in it and I need more down here. The intelligent thing to do would be to weigh this and then weigh this and see if I have enough to make another sock. But um, no, I'll probably just <laughs> I'll probably just go for it and just keep knitting and hope for the best. Uh, play a little yarn chicken, see how it goes. So hopefully you'll know by next week and then I'll know if I can actually get a full pair plus a pair of short socks out of the West Yorkshire Spinners yarn. I think I will. So like I said, we'll, we'll know by next week. You know, these nails are throwing the camera off a bit because I can see the colour changing. But again, this is, this is quite true to colour. What you're seeing here in the yarn, it is quite true to colour. I'm not sure how true it was in some of the other uh, podcasts that I've done. So I suppose there is, a, there is some benefit to it. Okay. Now, a couple of weeks ago, thanks to my patrons, I bought a few items for review and I said, this week, sorry, you can hear all my puppies complaining down there. It wouldn't be a Niterati podcast without my puppies showing up in it somewhere, really, would it? Um, so yeah, I said that I would review this book this week, and if anybody would like to become a patron, I put the link in the description of this video, and you can pop over there and see what the rewards are. Uh, there are rewards from a dollar a month, uh, going up as far as ten dollars a month at the moment, I think there's a five dollar tier as well so there are three tiers so you, if you do want to contribute you can decide yourself if you think that there is uh, any value in it for you okay so mindfulness in knitting by rachel matthews this book and i've been i've been thinking on it and thinking on it how am i going to review it um, I'm still, I'm not entirely clear. I mean, it sounds like a great idea. You know, mindfulness and knitting and... I don't know, I just feel like the concept wasn't fully realised in the book. So although the book was quite an easy read, so you could relax, you didn't really need to concentrate on what was in it. And I can, I can appreciate that, you know, when you want to unwind a bit and you don't want a really heavy... You know, you don't want Dostoevsky or, or War and Peace or anything like that. You just want, you want Gone with the Wind instead of War and Peace. You know, that sort of way. Um, so yeah, from that point of view, it wasn't heavy and I, I appreciated that. But I kind of felt sometimes as though the mindfulness piece and the knitting piece were just kind of shoved together and you know there was the idea of mindfulness and there was the idea of knitting but the idea of mindfulness in knitting and having the two of those gel properly that wasn't happening for me uh, I did enjoy the first I think it was the first chapter where the author spoke about uh, knitting when she was younger and being away at school that was lovely I actually really I liked that that was that was probably my favorite part of the book was the bit at the beginning. Uh, there are sections in this book where, you know, it's suggested that you sit down and write a few bits or 
you know, there are suggestions, exercises, I suppose you could call them. I am not the sort of person to do that. So I didn't. It's possible that if you did it, if you are that sort of person, you might get a little bit more out of it than I did. Just purely because if I'm, if I'm reading something like this, I'm not really looking for a workbook. And to be fair, it isn't. It's, it's only, I think if, there might be a section per chapter. You know, there, there aren't a huge number of chapters either. But just bear in mind that I didn't do the exercises, so maybe I'm not getting everything out of this book. But I did feel that parts of it were a little odd to me. So, for example, there is a section on craftivism. Now, for me, craftivism is, you know, things like the cat hats. You know, using your craft to express something. You know, you're, you're trying to express maybe your political opinion or, you know, it is, it is activism through crafting. Whereas the way it seemed to be taken in this book was that you should be crafting in public for the sake of it, because people won't like it. It actually came off to me as a little bit obnoxious. You know, kind of a real flipping the bird at people who might not like you knitting in public. Now, maybe it's, it's just me. I have never experienced an issue knitting in public where somebody has approached me and told me that I shouldn't be doing it. Maybe this happens in other countries. You know, it certainly does not happen to me. I've never seen it happen to anyone. I've never heard of it happening to anybody. The closest thing I've heard is people who were knitting in church, where people may have gotten a little bit upset by that because they don't understand that it helps with the concentration. But this idea of, you know, knitting... <coughs> Sorry, there's a cat outside. I'm just going to pause here. Sorry about that, everyone. There was a cat on the wall, and uh, clearly my puppies had to tell everybody that it wasn't supposed to be there. Okay, so, yeah, I, I think I've basically said everything that I was going to say on the craftivism part. I don't get it, but maybe that's just me. Maybe if I was in America or Canada, where the culture is perhaps a little bit different, maybe people over there are having problems with knitting in public. But... You know, I mean, knit, the Worldwide Knit in Public Day has just passed there last weekend. And I actually think that the whole point of that day is to promote knitting as to, as opposed to being, you know, an activist. So look at me, I'm knitting in public. What are you going to do about it? Which I, I don't think that that's the feel at all. So if anybody does want to comment, if, if you've had an experience in public where, you know, somebody has approached you for... <laughs> for knitting or doing some form of crafting I'd be really really interested in hearing about it so please do comment on that so yeah overall you know it was it was okay I just didn't feel as though it was what I was expecting and I think that's the big problem it's not what I was expecting you know so the problem isn't necessarily in the book it's just I was expecting you know as you're knitting um, you could try this to be more mindful or, you know, I was expecting that sort of uh, exercise rather than what's actually in the book. And I do think that that's more my fault than anything. So if, I mean, I'm, I don't want to start giving things ratings, but this would be, if I did, this would be in the middle somewhere for me. It wasn't a bad book, but it, you know, if I look at it and compare it to, say, Elizabeth Zimmerman or something like that, that I would really get into, it just wasn't brilliant for me. So, yeah, I mean, if you see it somewhere and it's on sale, pick it up, give it a go. It's a, you know, it's not a heavy read. It's something that you can just use to unwind a little. I'm just curious what it says on the back. Oh, there you go. So it tells us a little about Rachel Matthews. Curated knitting events for the v and I do enjoy the... Actually, if anybody is in London and you can go to the Victoria and Albert Museum, do. It is fantastic. I believe it is free in. You do pay for some of the exhibitions, but mostly 
it's free and the stuff they have there is amazing. It's a fantastic resource. So just, just while I see it there, if any of you are visiting London, definitely pop in. Okay, so I think that is the end of this part of the podcast. Um, what am I doing in the technical section? This week I am doing the Turkish cast on in the technical section, which I will be doing just after this. If any of you are not interested in that and you're going to leave us here, thank you so much for watching this far. I do appreciate it. If you have any suggestions about anything that you might like to see in the future, do comment below. Uh, also, if you could please like and subscribe, that would really help me in getting out there and uh, getting a few more viewers so that perhaps, you know, we can, we can build our community. And that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Happy days. Okay, thanks guys. Hopefully I will see some of you next week and I'll see some of you in just a moment for the Turkish cast on. Okay guys, welcome back. Uh, this is the technical section for the Turkish cast on. Well, the Turkish cast on would normally be used um, in places where you might use Judy's magic cast on, which I've covered before. So maybe for the toe of a sock, uh, something like that. It's what I would call a circular cast on. So you're going to cast on and then be able to knit in the round with this and it will be seamless, much as you would expect from the toe of a sock. So same as last week, I'm using a circular needle with a nice long cable. That is actually because you'll be basically knitting in the round more so than just for the cast on. You could probably do this cast on using um, DPNs if you were feeling brave. Okay, so to start, I just make a little slip, slip knot. Actually, it's come to my attention that not everybody knows how to make a slip knot. So I'm going to do that again and I'm going to do it slowly. So I just make a loop, okay? I have my finger through the loop. I bring my finger around, okay? So you can see I've just taken that loop, come around, and I pick up that extra piece of yarn, and then you can just pull it tight, okay? So that's just how you make a little slip knot. And then you can probably hear one of my dogs scratching. <laughs> they really do like to make an appearance. Okay. Also, I should mention, I'm using this, these needles because this is what I have handy. It's not, they are quite a, quite a large needle for the yarn that I'm using. But also I find that when they're bigger, you can probably see better. So what I really should do is get some chunky yarn. But I digress. Okay, so I put the two needles together. All right. These happen to be square needles, you can use any needle you want. Okay, I bring the yarn over. Now I'm going to cast on 10 stitches. Okay, so the yarn has come from underneath over. So that's one stitch on each needle, even though we're just wrapping it around. So every time you wrap it around, it counts as two stitches. Okay, so if I want to cast on 10 stitches, I need to wrap it around five times. So there's one, two, three, and you see when I'm counting these, I'm bringing the yarn all the way around so it would create a full loop. Four, five. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do next is, if you remember from last week when I covered Magic Loop, you pull out one of the needles. So you're popping some of the yarn down onto the cable and then I'm just going to knit the five stitches that are left on. You need to be careful about doing this, make sure that you're going in. Okay, so I'm knitting the five stitches that are still on the, on the needle. Okay, so there's one, two, Split the yarn there. Two. 
three. Now you'll see these are actually twisted and I probably should be knitting through there but for this cast on I find that this cast on is quite loose so I want my stitches a little tighter. Four. Five. Okay. You can see that we have come to the slip knot and we're not going to use that. So we can just pull that out. So now what we have is, and you do need to be careful, that is a stitch down there, don't let it unravel like that, that is stitch number five on your cable. So we have the five stitches that we've just knit and we have another five stitches down here sitting on the cable. So same as last week, sorry about the clunking, we pull the stitches that are on the cable onto the needle and then we take this needle and pop it out. So the stitches you've just knit are now down on the cable. As I said, make sure you have five, one, two, three, four, five, because this will want to undo itself, but we're not going to have that. And then making sure you're not using the tail, <laughs> you knit these stitches. So you have one, two, three, sorry I'm just going to try and adjust that, there we go, four, five, and there we have it. So if we look here, sorry, just trying to get the focus right, we have five stitches on the cable and five stitches on the needle. And there's the, the row that you knit, so if we turn it over you can see the, the wrong side. Sorry. There we go. So we can see the wrong side there. Now this is quite loose, partly because of the yarn that I've used with this needle, but also this is just a looser cast on compared to Judy's mag magic cast on. So I think that I would be inclined to use Judy's magic cast on, certainly for socks and things like that, because you don't want a toe poking out through, you know, a loose area at the tip of your sock. But that said, it is always good to have extra uh, techniques in your arsenal. So I would definitely give it a go, learn it. It is quite simple. Once you get the hang of it, it's just, the trying part is just making sure that those stitches don't disappear. So you saw what I did with the, the tail end. And once it's knit, you can see it's fine now. It's holding itself in place. That's not a problem. But you do just need to make sure that you do enough wrapping to get that to work. Okay, so I think that's it. It's quite a, a short and sweet one for this week. If you have any suggestions for what you'd like to see next week, then please do let me know. Uh, put it below in the comments or you can contact me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Actually, Twitter, I am on Twitter, but you know what? You're better off trying to con contact me on any of the other forums. Um, I'm on Ravelry as well. As I've said, there's a Nitterati group. So definitely reach out. I'd love to hear from me. Uh, that's it for this week. If you haven't yet, could you please like and subscribe? It really, really does help. Um, and if you have any friends who are interested, do tell your friends. Ask them to pop over. <laughs> Uh, especially if there's any techniques that they want to learn or anything they'd like me to cover. Um, if you don't want to show them how to do something, tell them to come and ask me instead. Hey! <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, hopefully I'll see you all next week. Okay, take care.